Hello everyone, we are group number 10 of Division C. In this video, we are talking about the COS topics, which is use of address bus, data bus, and control bus in one Newman architecture. Further, we move towards in this topic. I shortly introduce to my group members Vaishnavi, Asta, Atharva, Bhavesh, Harsh, and Arshad. These are the group members who is covering this topic today. So, without wasting of time, let's talk about it. So let's talk about introduction. One Neumann architecture is a computer architecture model that is based on the concept of central processing unit, means CPU, memory and input output devices. It was first proposed by computer scientist John von Neumann in late 1940s and has since become a dominant architecture for most general purpose computers. In a one Neumann architecture, the CPU is responsible for executing instruction and performing calculation. The memory in one Neumann architecture is a single address space that stores both data and instruction, which are treated as the same type of information. Now we will see what are the buses. So basically, buses in non Neumann architecture are a set of wires that are used to transfer data and control signals between the CPU memory and input output devices. They are used to connect different components of a computer system and enable communication between them. The three main buses in one human architecture are first the address bus, second the data bus and third the control bus. So I will explain the address bus. The address bus is a set of wires that carries the memory address of the data that the CPU wants to read from or write to. It is a unidirectional bus, meaning that the data can only flow in one direction, from the CPU to memory or input-output devices. The number of wires in the address bus determines the size of memory that can be accessed. For example, a 16-bit address bus can address up to 2 to the power 16, which is 64K memory locations, and a 32-bit address bus can address up to 2 to the power 32, which is 4GB memory locations. When the CPU sends an address on the address bus, the memory controller uses it to select the memory location that contains the data being accessed. And when CPU needs to access data from memory or an input-output device, it sends the memory address of the data it wants to access over the address bus. The memory controller uses the address to select the appropriate memory location register. Let us now head towards the data bus. The data bus is a set of wires that allows the data to be transferred between different components of a computer or electronic device. It carries information in the form of binary digits that represents instructions, data or address. The size of data bus determines how many bits can be transferred at once, typically ranging from 8 to 64 bits. For example, a 16-bit data bus can transfer up to 16 bits of data at a time and a 32-bit data bus can transfer up to 32 bits of a data at a time. A typical data bus is 32 bits wide. This means that up to 32 bits of data can travel through a data bus every second. The amount of data a data bus can handle is known as bandwidth. The speed of the data bus is measured in megahertz or gigahertz and this affects the overall performance of a system. The CPU sends or receives data on the data bus when it reads from or writes to a memory location. A faster data bus allows for quicker communication between components and faster processing of data. Now let us discuss about the control bus. The control bus carries control signals between the CPU and memory. These signals are used to control the flow of data between the CPU and memory. For example, the memory read signal is used by the CPU to request that data be read from the memory, while the memory write signal is used to request that data be written to memory. Other control signals 
on the control bus include address valid, data valid, memory read, and interrupt request. These signals allow the CPU and memory to communicate effectively and ensure that the data is transferred correctly and efficiently. Now the next part is about control signals. The CPU contains a control unit which controls the functioning of all other components connected to the computer system. The control bus is used to transfer the control signals from one component to another component. The central processing unit CPU transmits different types of control signals to the system components. The devices also communicate with CPU by transmitting the control signals using the control bus. The control bus is a bidirectional and assists the CPU in synchronizing control signals to the internal components and the external devices connected to the system. The control bus transmits the control signals such as a device interrupt signals, byte enable signals, memory read or write signals and status signals. Now the first signal is memory read, a signal that indicates the CPU wants to read data from memory. Now the another is memory write, a signal that indicates that the CPU wants to write data to memory. Third is address valid. A signal that indicates that the address on the address bus is valid and can be used to access memory. Now the fourth one is data valid. A signal that indicates that the data on the data bus is valid and can be read by the CPU. Fifth one, memory ready. A signal that indicates that the memory is ready to send or receive data. Now the sixth one is interrupt request. A signal that indicates that an interrupt has occurred and the CPU needs to stop what it is doing and handle the interrupt. Now this was all about the control signals.